and I said something on the air the other day on V103, and I said, um, unfortunately, opportunism has overcome activism. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In certain ways. Uh, and now, clearly, there are some other factors involved with it. Public safety announced that the curfews in effect in Atlanta. <laughs> that, there we go. Yeah. Public surfing on every device in here. Um, what we were saying was, Wait, somebody said it's, it's not rioting; it's an uprising. Do you know the, the difference between going a, to between get Gucci and an uprising? Going to get Gucci and breaking into a uh, store to steal liquor is not an uprising. It's not an uprising. It's not. Okay? That's not y'all. People act like okay, y'all act like hurting Zara and Target and Adidas is gonna change anything. Don't y'all understand? These are corporations. You burn it down, it's insured. Y'all ain't hurting them people doing that. At all. Y'all ain't hurting nobody doing but that. But the small business owner, the African American business owner, you're killing owner, him. He don't have them, that long paper like that. So again, we already had the COVID nineteen situation where everybody had to sit home. So so smaller businesses suffered. Personal, you know, uh, independent businesses suffered behind that. Now. I mean, it's not. It's, it's, in some in some cases, it ain't even no coming back. It ain't no coming back right. because not only did they lose money behind COVID, they somebody ran in and broke all the windows and, and burnt and burnt shit up. Like that makes no sense. Again, I don't see how that is going to help get justice for for George Floyd. I don't see how that is going to help uh, get the cops to to act right by us. I don't see how any of that is going to help. I understand civil unrest. I get that. Mm -hmm. I understand that. I understand, I understand protests. I get all of that. And there's nothing wrong with that. It, what, what happens is when you take it from it being about justice and, and equal rights and all of that, and you turn it into something else. You turn it into, uh, you turn it into looting and rioting. And then, all, and then all of a sudden, your uprising is no longer an uprising. Now, it's just people be, acting crazy in the streets, giving cops a reason to tase you for, for whatever and all of that. Like, that. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying don't uh i'm not saying don't be upset i'm not telling you how to be upset i'm saying don't don't burn down your own house because you're mad at somebody else that doesn't make any sense that makes zero sense okay. and it's not going to get you what you're looking for if what you're looking for is change that's not going to make change it's not going to happen i Sorry. see people arguing that we need to uh what what has happened is we have changed the conversation to a certain degree they are no longer focusing on Breonna Taylor and George Floyd. They're talking about riots. Um, if the goal was to draw awareness to protest, uh, get your point of view, and be active about those particular murders, tragedies, we're not talking about that right now. They're talking about, we're talking about uh, the news curfews. talking about curfews, martial law, what doesn't happen. rioting, looting, burning. That's what they're talking about. We're not talking about what we came here to talking about, to talk about. So, again, I get the whole frustration thing. I, and at the end of the day, people are going to do what they want to do. But are you being an opportunist or an activist is always my question. For the activists that are out there who are really down for it, down to make change, down to make the cause go, who are here for the cause, for the people who's just trying to come up and get some free shit, that's not, this is not the time for that. No. This is not the time for that. Um, we're going to go to, we have a journalist in here. Uh, let me get this. Lauren uh, LaRosa. Let me, Lauren, I, I hope I said your name right. Let me get Lauren in here. And we're going to wait for Mark Lamont Hill. And we're also going to get, um, we're also going to get uh, Tamika D. Mallory. Hopefully that echo was gone. Uh, waiting on Lauren right now. Hey, guys. Hey, sis. How are you? I'm good. How are y'all? I'm good. Uh, introduce yourself to everyone in here. Get, r r break your credentials down, sis. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm Lauren, Lauren LaRosa. I am a reporter and producer uh, with TV, so some of you guys may have seen me on the show. I want to say, though, it's like an honor sitting here with you guys. Like, Neo grew up listening to you. Tigga grew up watching you in, like, forever. So I'm really happy to um, be having this conversation with you guys. And I've been tuned in watching all, even before I knew that they were going to ask me to come on this live. So it was weird that that happened. Right. That I wanted to ask you guys, I heard you on here talking about the looting and we just had this conversation at work today. Mm -hmm. and I posed to the room and you guys look a lot more like the rooms that I'm normally in when it comes to work. Although, you know, the conversations are, they try to be as inclusive as they can be. What do you want people to do then? So if, if, if 
the silent protesting and the peaceful protesting hasn't worked and the looting, I hear you guys' points about that. We need right now voices of what to do. Like, what what should we do? I, I know everybody that's my age, that may not be my age, that's upset right now. We're trying to figure it out. And it looks like that's the only option because that's what everybody is doing. And you guys know when things hit social media, people will keep doing it. What do you guys suggest we do then? Well, that's the, that's the question at hand. That's the reason for what we're doing here is so that so is that we can come in with ideas and figure out what to do because what we're doing is not going to work either oh we lost you okay <laughs> <laughs> there you go okay yeah yeah so we okay can't hear now you we now. lost your sound now we can hear you can you hear me now yeah yes. there we go there we go yeah no what i was saying is that's the reason that we're doing this right now because we need ideas i didn't say Multiple times. I don't have the answers. I don't know what it is we need to do. I know that what we've done is not working. I know that what's happening right now is not going to work. Because, all, because again, I feel like all that this is going to do is give the, the powers that be an excuse to be even worse, to do even worse stuff. I, that's what I personally feel is going to happen with this. I, I think that we got their attention with the civil unrest. We definitely got their attention, but now we need to be saying something. Because yeah. as of right now, we got the attention. And what we're saying is, Let's go. Let's go. Uh, steal some shoes. That's what. That's what we're. That's what we're saying to them. At least that's what they're hearing. And mind you, it's a couple people out here talking about it's not just black people looting. It's white people looting too. Listen, I don't care who it is is looting. It's not productive either way. Be it us, be it them. It's not productive. So I'm. I'm not pointing. I'm not pointing fingers at the people that are uh, protesting the right way. I'm not talking to y'all. I'm not y'all. Are, y'all are doing what y'all supposed to do. I'm talking about the people that feel like they need to burn something. In order, in order to get their point across. I'm talking about the people that feel they need to throw a brick through a window and run up in the store and grab everything they can grab and calling that an uprising. That is not an uprising. Right. Do you yeah. not, I'm only asking y'all questions because I'm so used to asking the questions, but y'all can tell me when it's my turn to not ask the questions. But mm -hmm. you know, do you feel like there has been a little bit of a shift? Because for instance, I spoke with Eric Garner's mom and his daughter and they said, we've never seen a mayor, like in, our, in their case, the mayor said, this isn't, this isn't even a crime. There's nothing I can do for y'all. This time around, they were a little bit, they were a little scared. The mayor came out instantly and said, the black community deserves justice. When all that stuff happened in Minneapolis, that man stood on that podium at that press conference and couldn't even explain why they came up with charge to, to get that man arrested. The, the guy who had his David, who had his knee on him. So I, again, I'm just asking y'all this because I can't help but defend these people who, and it's not the people who are just going looting because they, they need a new bag. Everybody wants a new bag, right? But when you listen to, I know Tamika um, is going to come on here later, and I follow her, like, even before this. Like, I think she is so dope. The way that she articulates things and just, mm -hmm. you, it's no stopping her, period. But when she spoke the other day and she talked about why she didn't hear Target burnt down, you couldn't help but feel her because it, it really did make a change. Like, we watched, no, there were going to be no charges. We Come on, they weren't going to charge that man with anything. He said normally it takes nine months to even look over these cases. In four days, now it's not the charge that we want. It's only one arrest, but we had something. So all I'm saying is, it's like if we're at a point right now where this is at least getting them to stop in their tracks and try and figure it out where they've been overlooking it and dropping cases before, it's like, I don't know what y'all want people to do. So, so now again, for myself, I don't have the answer either. What I, what I feel is I don't feel that just peaceful protest alone does it either. I, right. I agree with that. Now, in Minneapolis, for example, they burned down police stations. I get that. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. It, spoke, it made sense. They took down the Target because that's a big business entity, entity in Minneapolis who isn't helping that community. They burned down the police station because the police, they, they, that's who are, they're killing them. I, I, I get the police station. Right. I get going to City Hall. I get going to the May. I, I get all of the institutions that belong to what contributed to the situation. Right. If you're, you're going to blame, like Tamika, I think she said, Target hasn't done anything to help. That's unfortunate. I agree. You know how you get back at Target? Don't take your Don't ass to Target. Don't shop there. <laughs> Not burn it down. <laughs> Don't shop there. So I, I also agree that the the unrest definitely put a lot more pressure on them. I get that. But again, we're talking about Minneapolis. I, 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 well, I don't understand myself personally 
why we're burning down Atlanta right this second, but oh, okay. That hurt my heart to see Atlanta be. I mean, I've never lived in Atlanta. I'm from Delaware. I live in LA. But like Atlanta has always been a place you go and that's home. And you see black and you see black just in a way that you, you don't see it in a lot of places. So that that's what really made me be like, okay, all right, we doing something wrong here. We gotta figure like we can stay on this loud path, but it gotta be we need to direct it a little bit better because that don't even make no sense. Like even if it is the police in Atlanta, they're not at the bucket shops. So I understand to your point. But um, another question I have for y'all, a lot of people right now are tearing down a lot of celebrities and social media, like influencers and stuff for not being loud enough online. Do you guys feel like that's something like if I'm not posting, do I not care if I'm a celebrity and I'm not doing what you guys are doing and I'm a black celebrity? Like, am I now we going to cancel that person? Like, how y'all feel about that? Um, <laughs> that's, that's, a, I mean, that, that's, that's definitely a slippery slope because I, I, again, it's, it's really difficult to tell a person, uh, what they should and shouldn't be doing. It's, it's, it's difficult to do that. But at the same time, I feel like anybody ignoring this, anybody ignoring this, you might be part of the problem. You might be part of the problem. This is, this is too, this is affecting everybody, black right. people, white people. This is affecting people, period, especially us, but this is affecting everybody. And for you to not say nothing at all, for you to have no opinion whatsoever, like somebody, I, 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 don't, who, I don't remember who said it, but they were like, this is a situation. You're either racist or you're anti-racist. There is no middle ground. Yeah. There is, there is, no, there is no, no neutral zone. Right. You're either this or you're that, period. And if you're, if you're racist, the, the race, you, we've, already seen, we've already seen, we've already heard their opinion. We know what the fuck they want. We know what they're talking about. Anti-racist, okay, we get that too. We understand that. People not saying anything, you need to say something. You need to let us know what side you stand on, period, right. point blank. And that's, that's from celebrities on down. Now, now celebrities have a, a larger microphone than the average man. So, yeah, it definitely makes sense for y'all to be saying something, too. So I don't, I don't necessarily agree with canceling anybody, but I definitely feel like they need to be held accountable for what they're doing, and they need to explain themselves if they haven't, if they haven't said anything yet. You right. need to explain yourself. What, what, what is, what's going on in your mind that makes you feel like you shouldn't have anything to say about it? Um, it, it's really tough for a lot of celebrity. You know, there's levels to celebrity, and in our days and times, there's you know there are the neos of the world, <laughs> and then there are the YouTube, Instagram celebrities, and it's just levels. They coming for everybody. I'm talking. They they. I just saw something about LL Cool J. Like I was like, oh wow. Like we apparently, met. lots of people got canceled today. Oh. <laughs> so. Twitter ain't playing no games, as they shouldn't be, but I just wanted to know, you know, I'm not But, again, you, what are you, there's, there's two parts to how I feel about it. Did you follow, fall in love with, support this celebrity for that or because of something else? And if, you, like, for example, if you're, if you, like, you like whoever, Celebrity X, and you've never heard Celebrity X say anything positive about the community, do anything for the community, speak out against in injustice. Why all of a sudden now are you pressing that person to do that? If you were a fan before, why all of a sudden now is it more important if they never ever did it before? Shouldn't that be a part of why you're a fan or not a fan from the go? Um, and celebrities are... It's, 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 it's challenging them because like the division amongst the, in this situation about are we supposed to be tearing shit up or are we supposed to be just going like like it's, it's really a division in our own community about how to deal with what's going on. There are lots of people who feel like, you know, like the, it's really like I said earlier, there's the Malcolm X quotient and then there's the Martin quotient. But even Malcolm X would tell you to go loot shit. If he, it's going to be targeted, it's going to have a plan. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be like it's not going to be just go out and act a fool. It's going to be like this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be a whole situation and planning behind it. It's going to like like Killer Mike said. There's going to be a strategy, and then you're going to go out and optimize your strategy, not just to be out and just to be doing stuff. And that's kind of the thing that that bothers a lot of people, especially when you see, you know, businesses here in Atlanta, just particularly, like, at Phipps, they tore up a, a, a restaurant that had been only open for a year that is owned by a black man. I know that black man. I know what he went through to get a place that black people could feel comfortable at all the time at Phipps. Yeah. And they tore the store up without even thinking, is this a black man's business? 
just because they was just tearing stuff up. So I, I, there's, again, as far as the celebrity thing, I think people put a lot of too much emphasis on what they expect from celebrities. If they're an entertainer, they're supposed to be here for entertainment. Right. There are some of us, there's the T.I.s, the Killer Mikes, you know, that are a little bit more uh, outspoken, more articulate when it comes to matters and things in the community. But if you didn't, if they weren't on that page when you started, like if that wasn't your thing from go, why all of a sudden you expect them to flick their I'm, I'm stay woke button on and why do you expect that more from them? Do you feel like people evolve though? Because like even all right, I watched the Michael Jordan documentary, right? And remember mm -hmm. he worked the guy uh, in North Carolina, the the I think it was like the senator or something at the time, and that guy didn't win, and it was like a whole thing that came after that that really fucked up the communities that he was from. And I would like to think that you know him as a person now that has evolved into who he is, he can look back on that and say, you know, maybe there was something I could have done there, seeing all the bad that was done after. I chose to be quiet and just be that celebrity that people love because of basketball. Even with you guys and y'all careers, like we watched you guys evolve to sitting here having this conversation. A uh, early Tigger or early Neo who was just trying to make it or was at the height or whatever you want to call it, the label might have said to you, like, look, you don't need to do that live. Like, do you feel like it's a, a thing to evolve and do you encourage people to do that? Because we do have some celebrities we love because they are celebrities, but it's a different type of feeling when you see somebody that you admire and you just idolize. Like, people really idolize y'all. Like, that's that push. There are people who will and do evolve, and there are people who will not in that way. Like, I don't, there's, like, keep it 100. Some of the songs you love to turn up to, you're not expecting that artist to do anything but what that artist does. I would rather, yeah, there's a lot of You're not. And, I, so, so I, I, and again, I'm not giving anybody a pass. Again, I agree with him. You, there's no way you can say nothing. That, that's just crazy. And I but, who know when to shut up. Definitely. Yeah, you got to know when to stop talking. <laughs> but at a certain point where you're like, okay, you could at least, like, can we at least get a, like, you are, like, you have a brother. You are a black man. You might have a son. Like, I know you feel something. You're a person. So, like, what's up? I mean, again, I, I, I just think you got to know, like, you don't go to a steakhouse looking for shrimp. You don't go to the barbecue place looking for Chinese food. There are certain people that are here for certain things. And they're like, do they have a responsibility to the community? That depends on if they feel that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I would say most of us believe that they do and celebrities do. We grew up in not the greatest conditions. So we always have done our best to effort to give back to those communities, uplift those communities and do things of that nature. But... Again, if you don't expect to select, like, I, again, if, I'm, I'm not going to call no names out because people are going to think I'm picking on people. There's just some people I'm not expecting a whole lot from. I, I, I see where you're going with this. I just, you know, it just, I don't know. I know it comes with a lot, too, because you guys have such big platforms. But I just think, especially today, it's like, like, me seeing, I woke up this morning and saw a picture. I mean, I expect J. Cole to be out on the on the ground, though. But just seeing it was just like, damn, like, this is real. But. I'm a, I'm, y'all got questions, y'all got stuff y'all want to say. I feel like I took over the time. I mean, I, I, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? I'm 28. What is, from where you sit, from where you, where your, your vantage point, do you think what's happening is effective? And if not, where do you think we should go? I definitely think what's happening is effective right now. That's why I'm not completely, I'm not for people getting hurt. I don't want to see people get hurt. I don't want to see businesses that don't deserve to burn down, burn down. I wish there was a leader and some strategy right now, but I think the noise is well needed. Like, I mean, I don't know. Like I, like I said, I'm from Wilmington. Delaware is a small place. Most people don't even know about Delaware, but like where I grew up at, I grew up in the hood. What we seeing right now, I've been seeing for years. It's just now it's, te it's direct, it's televised. Like I grew up with my mom going to court, fighting back against cops who beat my brother up because they said he resisted arrest. He didn't resist the rest. Y'all just thought he didn't have a parent that would show up in court and fight that. And cops don't show up to court. Phones get broken. My mom has to buy new phones because somebody recorded something just to prove his point. I grew up with this stuff. And I know that it's going to keep happening. I've seen protests. And I was like, so to me, I think for people stopping in their tracks right now, this is the best thing I've ever seen. And I hope that we get somewhere from it. I don't know, you know, if we have the leadership that we need on it, because I do think it's getting kind of senseless. And I want us people to come back and kind of get on that straight line of figuring out where the noise should go. But I'm here for the noise. Bring it. Like, that's how I feel.
who do you I, I've been asking this question a lot. We 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 grow up in an era where we don't have a clearly defined leader. We don't have an MLK. Right. We don't have a Malcolm X. We don't even have a Jesse Jackson, a Reverend Al Sharpton. We don't have none of that. Who who do you feel could be a, a leader that most people would, would, listen would listen to? Because I've watched, I've watched people t like I've watched people lift people up to tear them right down. I feel like Killer Mike. I, 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 it's between Killer Mike and uh, Tamika Mallory for me. And for me, I know like with Killer Mike, I feel like with Tamika Mallory, if you've been following her, you already know how dope she is. But I think that moment that she had in Minneapolis the other day is like a lot of the world got to see her. And it's only going to get better from there. But with those two people, I feel like not only are they like they're naturally leaders. There are some people that can just come and speak and everybody shuts up and listens no matter how you feel. And I feel like they have that and we need that. But I also feel like they come from it. And that's a different type of leadership when you really come from it and you feel it and you it's your family it's your cousins it's not just something that you're watching and you have to speak about it and they're actually on the ground killer mike actually owns build uh businesses in atlanta you know tamika is actually in harlem and in new york and her friends are the business owners and she's there she's handling things that don't hit the tv and the media so she really cares but right. they us like they're not too far when they speak i can understand them i don't feel like they're talking at me like they're my parent and stuff and i think that's the thing with my generation too if you speak at us, we're like, who Who are you? Like, what? I'm going to go over here and do that. But when you speak with us and you can command with us, it's different. I think those two people have it. Like, I think that they really could. I'm so interested to see or hear what she comes on here and, and says um, with you guys having this conversation because I think we got it right there. We just got to put continue to push them in that position and just see where it goes from here. I like that. Do you like – is voting important or not? Uh -huh. Is voting important or no? Voting, voting is important. Um, I will say that, like, I know with me, like, a lot of people my age feel like it's not important because when you vote, you feel like it doesn't directly affect you. Like, you don't feel the effects right away. But it is important. And I had a conversation on my Instagram live the other day with a really amazing um, girl named Erica Claudio. The Instagram live is still on my page. Uh, and we talked about the whole Biden moment on The Breakfast Club. Again, I'm from Delaware. I've been supporting Biden blindly forever because it's Delaware. Like, we're just happy to have our name in the books and all that stuff. When he made that comment, people were like, what the hell? And to me, my mom keeps calling me. She thinks I'm out. Hey, okay. mom. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that comment was really important to me because it showed me why voting on every level was important. So we talked about voting in um, the elections before the president. We talked about even the presidential election uh, voting down ballot, because even if we get Biden in office and people are not happy with him, if you get the right people locally and um, Mr. Merrick, uh, Merrick just talked about this on your live too, like if we get the right people locally, change happens locally first. We just never really have the right people locally because people don't pay attention right. to and a lot of us, the young people, we really, we, we be on our shit. Like, we really know what's going on. We just don't take the time to do those systematic things because it, we don't feel the effect. Like, it doesn't hit us. Like, but it's important to me. I, I feel like it's important. Well, it does. You just don't recognize it hitting your ass until we out in the streets. Right. <laughs> Rubber bullets and we got people on the breakfast club seeing crazy things. Then that's what I'm saying. But sometimes us anyway our young people and we we watch instagram and social media we need those what the hell moments to really make us sit back and think okay what does that mean like if they're taking the black vote for granted if that's how you feel what does that mean and how can you help and even if it's a breakfast club interview or a tweet or a meme that made you realize that what you gonna do about that sis right well lauren we appreciate your time and your insight keep doing what you're doing sis get your get your generation to stand up for themselves please yeah. go vote and keep doing what you do. Thank you. See you guys. All right. Thank you, love. My girl.